In this chapter, we will find out about the national and regional political parties in today's India. We will also discuss what is wrong with these political parties and what can be done about it. Are you aware about our government and our constitution? Well, I'm sure you are. Your books give you a lot of information about it. But this is not the case with everyone. If you travel to the remote parts of the country and speak to the less educated citizens, you will come across people who may not know anything about our constitution or the nature of our government. But chances are that they would know something about our political parties. So we can say that the political parties are one of the most visible institutions in democracy. Because for most ordinary citizens, democracy is equal to political parties. But do not mistake this visibility for popularity because they are far from being popular. In fact, we tend to be very critical of political parties. We blame them for all that is wrong with our democracy and our political life. We identify the parties with social and political divisions. So it's very obvious and natural to ask, do we need political parties at all? See, if we go back a century ago, very few countries of the world had any political party. But this scenario has completely changed. Because now, there are only a few countries that do not have them. But what is the reason for this? Why have political parties become so universal in democracies all over the world? We will discuss all of this, but before that, it is very important to clear the basics. So let's first understand the meaning of political parties and what they do. See, a political party is basically a group of people and this group comes together to contest elections and hold power in the government. They agree on some policies and programs for the society which they feel will be good for all and bring improvement in the life of all. But different political parties have different views on what is good for all. So what they do is they try to persuade or convince people why their policies are better than others. And their goal is to implement these policies by winning popular support through elections. But if one party wins, then the other party in opposition loses. This is a norm. And that is why parties reflect a fundamental political division in society. Now, parties also reflect only certain ideas about a part of the society and therefore involve partisanship. Oh, is that a new term for you? Well, let me explain what it means. See, a partisan is a person who is strongly committed to a party, group or faction. And partisanship is marked by tendency to take a side and failure to take a balanced view on an issue. That is why every party is known for which part it stands for, what its views are, which policy it supports and whose interests it upholds. And a political party has three components. First, the leaders, then the active members and finally the followers. Basically, political parties fill political offices and exercise political power. They do so by performing several functions. So saying that a democratic country like India cannot function without its political parties won't be wrong. But why are political parties so important? Why do we need them? Are they really good for a democracy? And what are the existing political parties in India? Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.